Welcome, YouTube! We are going to be checking out a brand new video that Staparu just put out. Wuthering Waves Everything Multiplayer or Co-op. Now, we are watching this over here at Twitch.tv slash NIXIRL. Come hang out with the gang sometime over here live on Twitch. We watched the Staparu video the other day going over all of the Wuthering Wave characters, ultimates, and some of their animations, and it looked great. I'm super excited about the game, and we've been asking ourselves about what is the co-op situation going to be? Well, it looks like Saparu is going to answer it here. We're going to live react to it and see the news about old Withering Ways, man. Let's get into it. Hello, YouTube. Today, we are going to be answering the question, what is the co-op like in what Withering Waves? We are going to go over what you can and can't do with your friends. Let's start off with the basics. What we the need to know is limited to three players max in one area. There's no restrictions on character limits, so three rovers or... Okay, so that's sick, and also somebody just hit the sponsor. Thank you, whoever just hit the sponsor. Um, So, chat, we already talked about it. Three characters in a party, so it makes, makes sense. Three characters in co-op, but you can be the same characters. That's kind of sick. Similar to Genshin. I know nobody wants to compare to the G game, but, I mean, it's our closest comparison, I'd say. Three inlands? No problem. But there is a restriction Dude, if you players. enter domains and dungeons, so you can't have three clones in there. Okay, Other so people again, that join your world can mine your ores and flowers, and that is not shared, so you gotta be careful. However... Okay, again, I don't want it to be like a direct comparison, but it's just the game that we're most familiar with. If you can join people's worlds and you can resource farm together, but only one person can claim, I think we need to, you know, all have a gentleman's agreement, if you will. If it's person X's world, they got to get first dibs. You feel me? You can't just pull up in people's worlds, snatch all their stuff, and then dip out. You know what I mean? That shit ain't cool. So make sure, you know, whoever you're co oping with, if they don't need it, then maybe you slide, you get to grab it. If not, you got to leave it for the for the home, for the, for the world owner, if you will. Everyone Everyone gets their own loot and echoes, so sharing monsters is a must later on. Okay, Especially that's when it comes down to these glowing red mobs, which do not respawn by the way. Killing these mobs will guarantee you a yellow echo grade drop. Another good feature about hunting with your friends is if they end up randomizing the spawn location of shiny echoes, you can share these drops with your friends. I don't know if this video is going to go more into it. And I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but I have been watching some content and I've heard that shiny echoes will be existing. So similar to, let's just say shiny Pokemon, where it's going to be a much lower percentage chance of interacting with these echoes, but they have a shiny, right? So they're going to have an alternative look to them. From what I've heard, as long as you catch a shiny echo once, you have the opportunity to unlock a shiny skin for every echo of that type. So even if the shiny echo that you get has just dog water stats on it, then you can get other echoes that have good stats and use the shiny skin on them. So it's not like you're looking for both a shiny with good stats. If you get a shiny, now all you need to look for is good stats. If you get good stats, now all you need is the shiny and you've got the fancy part. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And maybe that'll change, but that's what I've heard. Right now, they spawn in a fixed location, up, so Lark? it's easy to find them, but it's, it's not always 100% on reset. The shiny drop rate is always going to be 100% drop, but the range of the rarity of the echo will range from either be green, blue, purple, or yellow. You don't need to tag the monsters to get the drop. If your friend kills the mob but you're not in range, you can just go there and collect your loot and capture your echo if it drops for you. Okay. Unfortunately, you can't help or do certain puzzles together. I'm hoping that they will adjust this feature because I do love the co-op content in this game. You can point out to your friends that they've missed a treasure chest here and there, or help them with the Wipeout Monsters event in the open world areas. There are certain events where if you touch a certain um, sound light, monsters will respawn over and over, and you guys can work together and clear that for the, for your, for the host's loot at the end. Okay, okay. Treasure chests are not shared in the world, so <laughs> you don't have to worry about someone looting your treasure chest here and there. Just One like of the G nice game. levels about the co-op multiplayer system is that you can party with other players regardless of their union level, or should I say world levels? The rates and drops are adjusted to their level, and you can play with your friends that either grind all day and they're higher above your their world level, and they've leveled up their world to like level whatever, 60, 70, and you're like level 20 world. You can still play with them, or vice versa. Players are able to... 
Okay, I'm a little confused by that though, because they said it adjusts it for each person, but how can I be fighting, let's say, a level 50 drop, and somebody else on my team be fighting a level 30, and somebody else be fighting a level 70? I guess they just, like, scale it appropriately to you, so, like, if in my world, I do an attack that would take 5% of their HP, then I guess when we're co oping my attack would still do 5% of the HP, I, I guess, I don't know how else it would be, yeah, damage adjustment, I guess that makes sense. To hunt and kill bosses together, which will be much faster when you're farming for their echoes. Not that it's really needed, since they pretty much nerf most of the bosses throughout all the patches, from technical tests to this beta. That's a little disappointing but if, if you die, just nerfed. There's certain bosses that you fight that will have a dome around them. You can't rejoin the battle again. However, I think it should be okay because with the current system, you just need your friend to kill the boss and you you'll you will still get the loot at the end, which is pretty cool. You can't co-op and I'll be honest, I, I kind of don't like that. Like, if there's special bosses where if you die you get kicked out and there's no re-entry, I feel like you shouldn't get the drops. What is the point? You know what I mean? Like, to me, that sounds like you gotta stay alive in order to win the fight. So if you get kicked out, I feel like minus loot. But I guess, you know what I mean? It, it certainly doesn't hurt to let people get the loot, but that makes it feel a little less intense. In the holograms or the tower, like, uh, stage, stages in the game, but the domains you can. In one of the trailers, it does show that the players are co oping in one of the tower stages or at least a stage looking similar to it, so perhaps they might add some more co-op features in the future. Crazy which is looking nice since co-oping is, I believe, you know, part of the community building, right? I would, I would love to play with more people in this game, especially help, especially helping people out with like uh, the the red glowing monsters or killing bosses for them. The latency doesn't seem to be much of a big problem in co-op. But it is more noticeable when you are hunting tacit field bosses together. You can still trigger intro skills without swapping in multiplayer because really, you can't really swap in multiplayer, especially when there's three of you around, right? Unless you're duoing and then the host can probably swap between the one and two characters. When their icon glows, you hit that button and your character will perform their intro skill during multiplayer. As for outro, um, I'm not sure about this one. With the recent patches of the game, your team members location are now revealed on the map itself. But sometimes I still have sure. trouble looking for my team members on the map, so I'm hoping they add a little more quality of life features to this later on. Co-op is unlocked at level 25 and there are 4 options. The safest option is the default option, which is application is required for entry. Dude, the this wall means that everyone sick. must apply to your world if they can enter or not. The second option is direct entry available. Now this is like a danger kind of like not having protection because if you leave your game on or forgot to log off, you might wake up one day and your world has gone extinct of all monsters. And yeah, chat, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, just use the option where people have to apply to join your world. Leaving it just open for entry, at least super early in the game, people just pull up, take all your resources and they dip. And now you're just, you know, <laughs> out of luck for the day. So yeah, I mean, maybe if you've been playing for a while, you're max level, you don't need your resources, you don't mind if people come in and farm. But aside from that, like definitely use the safest option first, obviously. Everything is dead. All your rocks are gone, all your flowers are gone. Yeah. And you've got nothing to do until the reset, uh, which is like 24 hours, right? <laughs> or on the reset timer, which is, um, I think it was like midnight my time in USA. It could be good, but if you just want to go around collecting echoes that people killed for you at the same time you won't know where people hunted your monsters right so it's a yeah, double-edged sword chat i'm confused let me know if you guys know is it random spawn locations for the echoes or do they have like an area that they're typically in that i'm very uncertain of the third option is entry not available this is maximum protection for those kirito players who just want to enjoy the single player life and then the last option is only friends can enter this option is fine unless you have more questionable friends. I believe Imagine. in just about any one of your friends can enter. I might keep this option on, but I do have a habit of adding randoms, so it might be a little bit dangerous. While the game does support cross-platform support between PC and mobile players, the game does not feature uh, 
cross-platform play between servers as in like europe or asia or north america and all that stuff so seems normal it's best to make sure you pick a server where you and your friends are going to play often together and that should be it for today's informative Wuthering Waves video regarding questions to the co-op system. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions about co-op, I'd be gladly to answer them below. Or if I miss anything, feel free to point it out for the community. And that's it. I'll see y'all in the next video. And this is your brother, Stubber Bro, out. Dude, good video. Good video chat. I will put the link in the chat so you guys can all go drop a like on it if you guys are watching on youtube it will be Love linked YouTube. in the bio so that you guys can give it a watch give it a like yourselves i'll be honest uh i kind of expected all of this stuff I, I i'll put it like this i'd be disappointed if we didn't have the majority of stuff that was spoken about now again it's very similar to the g game i know some people don't mind the comparison some people get offended they're like no it's totally different it is what it is. In, in terms of like how the game is played, it will largely be similar to me. That's the closest comparison that we've got. Like, you know, obviously they're different games. They're going to have different player bases. They're going to have people that enjoy both the games. No problem. But yeah, with the co-op stuff, it seems all very reasonable. I'm glad that we're able to co-op. I'm glad that the functionality of it other than that one thing where like if you get kicked out of like a dome like locked ball so you could still collect afterwards that feels a little corny to me but i mean i guess it'd be better than the other way where like if people are helping you farm regular echoes and you get killed you go back to some sort of tp point and then you run back over and you can't collect that stuff i think that would be more irritating than the former so I mean, largely, it seems pretty good. I'm excited about Withering Waves. One's in chat if you guys are excited about Withering Waves. And uh, it will be coming out at the end of May, right? I believe it's the end of May when it's going to be releasing. So that's going to do it for the video. If you guys made it this far, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop a like on the video and leave a comment down below letting me know what you're most excited about, which character you're most excited about. And again, come join us over here at twitch.tv slash NXIRL sometimes. We're going to be playing some Withering Waves on launch. I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm going to see you guys all in the next video. <laughs>